Hello and welcome to the World Show. Hello and welcome to the World Child Show, brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. Today, as always, you know the show will be beautiful and we have so much to learn. And joining me is a fantastic guest, but I won't reveal until after this break. See you soon. Welcome back. It's still the World Child Show, brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. As you know, Global Health, uh, Global, um, the show is basically um, going to provide you with information that has to do with our children and the well-being of our mothers. Today's topic particularly focuses on women, maternal health in particular, and we're going to be addressing the issue of fibroids in women. Many of us know that fibroid is an important aspect of our lives. Why do I say that? I say that because over 80% of Nigerian women often fall into the situation of having fibroids. And research has shown to a very large extent that black women are more susceptible to having fibroids. Joining me today to tackle this all important issue is someone that I consider very, very dear to my heart. He's not only a medical doctor, he's a philanthropist, and he's someone that is doing something amazing for women across Nigeria and Africa. His name is no other than Dr. Benjamin Olojabutu. Welcome to the show, Dr. Thank Benjamin. Thank you for having me today, Claire. How are you doing today? Very well, Dr. Benjamin. And you know what? Today is important for me because yes. um, as a woman, I feel very much connected to this issue. I know. And I also know that too many women, young women that I know, are suffering from fibroids. Yes, they are. And it's almost as if their life is coming to mm. an end because this is something that basically causes them to bleed on yeah. a daily basis. Yeah. Um, during the last program that we had, you yeah. were our guest, and that day was your birthday. Yes, it was. Thank and, you. Um, one of, the, of course, we're still celebrating. <laughs> and one of the reasons we are bringing you back is because aside from the work that you do in your mm. medical profession, you yeah. run um, a non-profit called the Benjamin Oloe Bonjito Foundation. That's Apologies it. if the name is. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So what you do in that foundation is a blessing to humanity. Thank I you call you our angel in human skin or in human form. But I want us to go and um, dive deep into this issue because yeah. it's extremely important to me. You have mentioned in the last program what fiber is, yes. but for the benefit of our guests and our viewers that are not, um, that were not a part of last week's show, can you please tell us what fiber is and what causes fiber? Okay, fiber is uh, non-cancerous growth um, tumor found in the uterus. So it's found in women. It's not in men. It's just in women because every woman has an uterus. Uterus is where the baby stays. So the fibroid grows in that uterus. So it's called a fibro, fibro, fibroid, you know, myoma, because it's in the, it's in the uterus. So as I said last time, I said, there, there, are, there are types of fibroids. You know, there are, and it is, it, is, it is named according to the position of the fibroid in the uterus. Oh, really? So you have intramural fibroids, intra, inside the endometrium. You have you have submucous fibroids inside the muscles of the of the of the uterus. You now have pedunculated fibroids. Those are the those are the fibroids hanging on the uterus. You now have subserious fibroids hanging on the skin of the fibroids. Wow. So and these these fibroids have now severe symptoms according to their position. For example, if the fibroid is intramural, is is inside inside the womb. Okay. You see them. You see women bleeding very very heavily. Using instead of using one part, using ten parts, using using abdominal, uh, um, using using pampas now because that is where the blood sheds from. So when they are bleeding, they are bleeding heavier because the fiber is just sitting sitting right there inside the endometrium. Now, some most of them are now also in the submucous. The pain is excruciating. So imagine if you if you have a cut on your muscle, so you know how much Painful pain you have. It yes. Is. So so because that fiber is on their muscle. The pain is usually excruciating. So you, know, you, know, you, know, you can't imagine. Now a woman has multiple fibroids in different locations. So think about the pain. Think about the bleeding. So most women now have these fibroids in different locations. We call them multiple fibroids, which is what we see on a regular, regular basis. Yeah. Honestly, sometimes we take these things for, for men. A lot of men probably don't even have all this information yes, and they often don't. take these things for, for granted. granted. I because I have seen women, you know, have um, this surgery mm. and it just seems like their life has completely changed. Oh, so that's, my, that's my next question is this, doctor. Does fibroid 
does it go on its own no, if that, i leave it no no so it doesn't go on its own so that's that, that's a myth that people try to use people to cajole because you know when you're very sick you're looking for help anybody tells you anything you want to follow some guys say that they can they, they can give you a drug that will shrink the fibroid or you pass it out through your through your anus and those are the fallacies we need to correct today now there's no, there's never a connection between your uterus and your alimentary canal alimentary canal is where your git your gastrointestinal intestinal tract where food coming through so it's from your mouth to your esophagus to your stomach to your small intestine to your large intestine to your anus there's never a connection so you can't take anything in your mouth that will make your fibroids yes go from your go from your abdomen into your so go from your uterus into your git it's wrong but because people are very very naive and they're looking for um solutions quick fix and, quick fix and stuff so people just go there and just ah come up here this forty thousand dollars buy this medicine and you shrink it that's a lie so as i said fibroid will not grow the only time a fibroid will not grow more is when you're when, when you're not menopausal which means you are at menopause if the fibroid is very small it will stop growing because growing, there's, there's okay. nothing feeding it anymore there's no moon feeding it anymore so it will stop it will recede or it will just stay away where, where it is some people now have fibroids before they are menopausal their tummy is already big so that fibroid not only will shrink it it will be the same size but they will not bleed again because they are already what menopausal, menopausal. some say okay i will leave my tummy like that i don't mind some say no this tummy is very dis disfiguring i can't even go to the bathroom because sometimes the fibroid is, is so big and rest on your git and your large intestine so when you even feed you feel very bloated you can't okay. go to the bathroom you have to strain to pull and that's 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 that's, that's a lot of problem I worry because um, to, we, we, we have, I've seen cases of yeah. where um, young women come to me and say um, they want to get surgery, mm. but they are worried that in the event that they have a surgery, because they are still young and unmarried, mm. they may not be able to have children. That's, that's Can you please demystify okay, this? Okay, so I tell people one of the leading causes of infertility or subfertility in Africa is fibroids. Okay. So one thing is the size and also the positioning. So you see, you see, a woman tells you that uh, when I make love to my husband, the sperm just always comes out, you know, because most of the fibroid is just sitting at the, uh, sitting at the, at the endometrium and putting on the cervix, so there's okay. no entrance. Entry so, point, so it yeah. has blocked the way, the, the way, the, the, the pathway for, 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 the, for, for the sperm to go in and, and meet, meet any eggs. So if you don't take out the fibroid, you don't, you don't even have any opportunity to have a baby. First is first, what well, take out the fibroid. Then there's a space for an egg to grow to and grow. a baby to grow. So it's important people understand that. You know, then it is it is it is it is it is it is important when you take out the fibroid, then you can make a baby. People have done so many surgeries for people that somebody just sent, somebody just sent me a text today. A woman I uh, that, that we operated in our BR state last year March. She had a baby boy today. Wow, that's great. So so so, so 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 she started for she it for ten years, and she was afraid for ten. So you have you have for ten years. You've delayed your childbearing for ten years because. You do have a knowledge that you can take out the fibroid. I, you are taking, you know, a, you know, you're, you're, you're taking a lot of herbal medicines and it's killing them. That, is, that brings me to an, an all-important question. Tell me, please. In this part of the world, mm. Nigeria, yes. we, I know our herbal cures are fantastic. Mm. But why is it that there is this dominant narrative that herbal medicine is a better alternative than surgery? So, so I tell you, very simple. People that are very, very bad, they are not great people will use your pain to give you psychological defeat so pe because people are people are people say they are afraid so they magnify the fear and tell them ah if you go to surgery you will die hey come to me i'm 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 something if i give you this medicine two three so, so, so i give you a story very 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 quick, quick story so one woman came to me from some water she came and said to me that ah she has, i've taken drugs from 2001 till now when I go to the man's office, the man will say I should sit down. That he will, he will take out something from, something from my vagina and see and show me and show me that the fibroid is coming out one by one. one by do you know what? Do, do what he does. So he went to buy somebody's fibroid in another hospital. Oh my goodness! And kept it in a bucket. So because the man is is lying down in a legitimate position, her face is on the other side. He is at he is at he is he is around the woman perineum. The man doesn't see what he's doing. So after he does that, any man says, Ah, ah, madam, Anna, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So after this, after this, after this, you just say, ah, madam, see, see what's coming out of you today. So one day, the, one day, the husband now was peeping through the window. And I said, ah, I said, ah. Every day, every day, this told me of my, my wife, it, 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 it doesn't go down. You know, I said, okay, this is what they are doing. And every time she goes there, it's 50,000 50, 50, naira. Since 2001, imagine that. That's somebody. 
told me clearly she goes from Lagos to buy an herbal medicine made from the poopoo of cow, poopoo of cow in Kuton for nine good years. Oh my goodness. Because people are going to And they stuff. are complicating yes. the situation on a daily basis. You are getting basis. my point clear. So it's information, love and compassion that will help people understand that, no, there's help for you now. You don't kill yourself with this thing because this is you are taking, they're killing your liver, killing your kidneys. So it's important you understand clearly that it's your life and you must take your life by yourself. Not, not, not any man, not any baba, not any mama. Because our parents are used to this about stuff. So they just say, you take this, you keep taking it. And you keep, keep taking, taking and taking and taking. It so, doesn't work. So doctor, one of the questions I would like to ask you is this. Yeah. There is this perception or this belief, mm -hmm. although um, it's still questionable, mm -hmm. that black women or women of um, um, Negro women yes. are more susceptible to having fibroids than their white um, yes. counterpart. Correct. How true is this? Very correct. It's, it's, so it's not because that we are black. It's not because of our genes. So the researcher said it very simple. When fibroids started occurring in the, in the early 80s, in the, in the, sorry, in the early 18th century, it was the first research that, that saw, it, saw it in black Americans. Okay. And realized that few people white had it. And as the year goes by, it becomes more effective, more, more, um, more, more common among black Blacks. people. So black people, so you, you won't say it's because we are black. It's not because that's where it's predominantly seen. Some white people have it, but it is more in black people. It's just from by research, not because we are black. So I tell people a few things. You know, a lot of black people don't marry as early as white people. True. White people, when they're 18, they're like, ah, let me go. Um, Daddy, hello. They, they marry their high school sweethearts. Yes, so. I'm going, I'm, 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 I'm going to sleep with <laughs> Charles. Charles leaves. Charles, Charles, my high school, high school <laughs> classmate, you know, that kind of thing. But we, we, it's not a culture in Africa, in Nigeria. We want to make all the money. The girls want to be the MD of the banks or the hospitals or everything. But it's not really the case. No, so, so, so they tell you, I want to tell that and handsome man, you know. <laughs> and so if a man is not tall and dark and handsome, they, they don't marry him. So it, it, it's important. I think when we start giving people culture of, culture of sustainability, one, and, as, and a, acceptance. So somebody might not be so rich to marry or, you know, you have to understand that the more you delay these things, you give, you give room for the fiber to grow. I told you last week, I said, yes, the, said way, the way the womb is structured, it cannot be a vacuum. Something must grow in the womb, either a baby or a fibroid. Okay, let, okay, you know, this conversation can be easily said from the point of view of a man, but yes. I am a woman, and uh -huh. I got married in my 30s. Yes. I got married at, uh, when I, I, um, I clocked 30. Yes. And during this period, yeah, we, we have to choose whom we choose to spend the rest of our lives I with. Agree, I agree. The situation for Nigerian women differs because mm. at the end of the day, having the right man and all yes. of that to marry, that's a different conversation so for prayer, prayer, day. Prayer is important. But you see, one question I would like to ask, not everybody's going to get married before uh, within a certain um, time frame. Mm. Not every girl will get married at 18, not yes. every girl will get married at 25. Right. So between when they are waiting for a partner, what can they do to prevent the occurrence of fibroids? So, first things first is, if, if you have a family history of fibroids, let's say you, your, your mother had it or your, your auntie had it, try and reduce the use of contraceptions. Okay. Because contraceptions also increase the, the, the estrogen hormones to be very, very to, 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 to be a lot in the body. That hormone can help you stimulate the fibroid to grow. Yeah, so people that use a lot of post or 2 post one they need, to, they need to stop it. You know, you need, so if you have that history, you need to stop it. And, 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 and don't grow fat because most of the most of the risk factors we see are people that are very obese they have fibroids okay. a lot people that people, people, people that have familiar history that means is in their family have fibroids a lot and people that take a lot of contraceptions so if you have if, if you have tendencies try and reduce these three things then that might reduce the ability to have a fibroid well isn't this like a a situation whereby a woman doesn't get any opportunity to win it all let me use myself as an example ahead, i've yes. had two children yes. and i don't intend to have more children okay. and these two children um, children i had them between when i was 30 and 36 yes. so now i'm done yes. so what are my chances of you know preventing fibroids is it that am i safe because i've had two children or do i need to have more children now that i'm approaching 40 no. and this is a question that is so valid because yes. some women want to have one child yes. some want to have four yes. but they have to wait within a certain I, period I agree how do we now manage so, the situation two things is, so if you have a, fun, a fundamental issue in your family there's a propensity to have the fiber but if it's not there you've had two kids already let, let me give you a scenario. So you had your first kid. So one year you didn't, one year no menstruation, another one year no menstruation. And if you are not an heavy menstruation, if, if, if you don't have all this heavy menstrual flow, the tendency to have a fibroid might not be there. Okay. Are you getting me? It, 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 it depends on the person. It is individualistic. 
the person, the, the person. So you can't say it's a general thing. Okay. Some will have kids early. They will still have five birds after, after, after because their auntie, their great auntie somewhere is in their family lineage. Okay. So they will still have it. Are you getting my point? Yeah. So at that point, they, 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 they would just maybe expect it and try and salvage it quickly on time so it doesn't okay. affect them. Um, if I, I affect them a lot, affect their lives. So it's important we understand that. So, but in Nigeria, what we have seen is that we need to, if we marry early, not maybe marry, maybe have kids, you know, not marry, but have kids, have children, and let that womb not be fallow. But that will reduce the capacity. And two things, another thing is that, like what we are doing today, a lot of advocacy and, and, and a lot of information, people should seek help on time. People shouldn't die of fibroid anymore. Seek help on time. On time. That's, so you, you, that's you, you, important. You see people carrying a fibroid that looks like a 40 weeks pregnancy. I saw a woman last week that, has, that looks like a and I asked her, you're just, you're just 34. Why did you leave yourself? He said, my mother said that if I do this surgery, uh, one person said I would die. And that's just a very, like, I, I totally agree that um, advocacy and awareness yes, is extremely very, very important. Key, yes. But I want to take you back to the issue of contraceptives again. You mm. mentioned that having, um, using too much of con contraceptives yeah. is going to be a problem. Yeah. But again, we're also, I, we, we, we don't say it's a lot of problems. It's not a lot of problems. It gives you it gives it is a risk factor it's a risk factor yes, okay of having okay. fibroid okay so my question is this a woman mm. ideally wants to use um family planning yes uh, are there specific contraceptives that we should be wary of or just those hormonal kinds hormonal kinds, yes. hormonal hormonal kinds. kinds. so 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 hormonal kinds but if you know your body so it's individual every Every man, every woman can use the, um, 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 condoms, diaphragms, very good because those on that, they, have, they have no hormonal impact okay. because they're just outside, they're just, like, they have, they're just like organs outside the body. But when you start giving injections, giving, um, um, giving drugs that are oral meat, those drugs have effect on the uterus okay. and that can make, that can stimulate the uterus to have fibroids. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So, so, so if you have, if you have tendency of having fibroids, you have to choose the contraceptive that you use that will not give you that opportunity to have a fibroid as a woman. Very, very, so that's why family planning is, is individualistic. You will say because Claire is using this kind of family planning, let that be the guy exactly, the same thing. Exactly. No, 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 that's not it. Exactly, but it's also very important because these days we, we encourage young girls to practice safe sex. Very In good. practicing safe sex, they should also remember that the onus is not on them to always be the one to, you know, mm. inject themselves with certain things no. or take post -in -all. Men. The, the men in their lives should be also willing to make that extra sacrifice so, so to protect me, their women, Let right? me say that now. Let's, let's say that very clear to everybody. Every man is responsible in, in keeping the woman safe. Very, very important. So if it's your duty, her. if you love her, you will keep her safe. You wear your condom, you, you, do, you, you, wear, you, 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 you protect her and protect yourself. Very, very important. Please, men, let's protect our women. I love that. And I know you are a strong women's advocate. I am. And we, I'm we, a we, I'm, I'm a we, feminist. We love you for that. So, <laughs> doctor, let's talk about lifestyle. Thank you. What are some of the lifestyle um, changes that people with fibroid, no matter how complicated or non-complicated, mm. what are some of the things that they should pay attention to, seeing that it's almost like a, a hopeless situation. You do the right thing. Uh-huh. You don't do the right thing. Uh-huh. So, because if it's a, you have a family history no. of fibroid, if you are obese... Don't say hopeless. People don't okay. say yeah. So, it's not, okay. it's, not, it's, not, it's not hopeless. There, there's help for you. So, first is, first is obesity. So, try not to add weight. Try not to add weight. You know, you exercise, you're eating less, eating late, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So, you don't, you don't, you don't eat a, a, lot, a lot of meals and stuff like that. You know, it's important you don't eat a lot. Then understand asking your mother's questions your parents how did my grandmother die how did my grandmother die do you, do you have any problem like this you know when you start noticing that your menstrual flow is heavier than usual go see a doctor it's important if the fibers are very very small really tiny and they're not disturbing your your proper lifestyle and they're not disturbing your normal activity there are some injections you can give early enough to okay. prevent the, the the symptoms okay. from really growing so it's okay. important you understand you know yourself okay. so don't just wait until somebody tells you ah bah, what's your tummy someone say that i didn't know i thought i thought i was adding weight to my i don't know my tummy is getting bigger <laughs> and looking very very fresh okay doctor there's this other um issue that i there was a time i was pregnant okay and i was having pain around my um, um stomach region yeah. and when i went to the hospital they ran some tests and they said they were cysts Yes. What are cysts? Does it have any relationship with fibroid as well? No, no, so, so, so they're, they're a lot different. So, so there's ovarian cyst, which is um, which is a cyst means water. Okay. Accumulated, that is inflamed in the ovary. 
Okay. So the ovarian, the, it's called ovarian cyst. The ovary is cystic. Sometimes it can be hemorrhagic. It might mean there's blood in the cyst, okay. blood inside the cyst okay. that is formed in the ovary. Those most times it may mix an appendix because most times the right of our side is a little upper than our left. So okay. when it's on the right, when it's on the right, people think is appendix sometimes. So you have to be able to decipher is it appendix or ovarian cyst. Okay. When is appendix? There's is there's vomiting, there's fever, there's 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 there's, um, there's pain. So you have right iliac fossa pain. Okay. There is vomiting and there is fever. That's what appendix. But for ovarian cyst, the pain is also on the right side, very severe pain. But it's more when you are menstruating. Okay. Are you getting me? Yeah. So that's ovarian cyst, or when you are pregnant, that as case maybe. So those times, if it's not very very large, you do you take medicines and it just dissolves. It just dissolves and on goes. its own. But if it's very big, you have to do a surgery. We call it cystectomy. Take out, take out, take out the surgery. Thing. One question that I need to bring your attention to, doctor, is this: a woman. Let's use it. Um, let's give an illustration. Yeah. A woman has gone for um, a surgery, um, a fibroid surgery. Yeah. They have taken out large chunks of ch um, fibroid. Mm. What is what is the possibility that there can be a regrowth or a recurrence of that? So there's a possibility. Yeah, there's yes, a, there's really, there is. Yes, and because based on your experience, because, because how the often womb, the womb cannot be fallow. Wow. But, 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 but from my experience, it doesn't really grow because me, I'm a very, very detailed surgeon. So I, I take out every Okay, that of brings me to what you do at BOF. <laughs> so I take out every bit of if we were to quantify the, the number of um, surgeries you've had uh, in, in, in regards to fibroid yeah. across Nigeria, okay. the question I would like to ask is, what have been some of the most challenging situations that you have had to treat? And why do you think that happened? So, um, 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 oh, loads of them. So I'll tell you one. One in um, one in one in um, Makadi that had um, she's she's had um, um, a CS before, okay, and had an appendix before. So there were a lot of additions. When wound heals, it forms addition inside the womb. In, sorry, inside the abdomen. So you have to now begin to separate. So she had this fibroid that was fixed with a large intestine. So we had, we, had to, we, had to, we had to first separate blood intestine first to give her space to be able to, she, she pulls once in a week. Wow. That's crazy, you know. So we had to take out that one first, first had taking out the fiber one after, after the, the other. I'm sorry, I'm sure you've seen all our pictures. Yes, I've seen those we'll images and it, it shocks me because mm. you have several large lumps. Yes. And I ask myself, how do they find accommodation in this small so, stomach no, of ours? So, <laughs> so don't, <laughs> honestly, I have, I have. It can take anything. I, I, but, but I, what, what we do in our foundation uh, as a form of work for me, I realize that every small seed can become the biggest kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you take your time as a surgeon to take out every seed with details and finesse and dexterity, the, the propensity for them to regrow in quick, in quick time is, is very it's little. Very limited so, so you give the woman one, two years, by the, by the grace of God, they get pregnant, it doesn't grow again. Because when, they, when there's a baby there, there's no ability of the fiber to grow again. I'm, now, I, I really advise that when you get pregnant quickly after the, after surgery, you know, wait, wait another one and they get pregnant again so that you give yourself, so you, you don't give the, because since so you have fiber before, you have a point to have it again. So get get pregnant and get married, just leave your, um, have your children and you cannot stay and you're going to be okay afterwards, yes. Wow. So um, I, I quickly took a sample across a number of um, women that I talked to and I asked, they, I told them to send in questions. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the questions which you may have addressed is, can I get pregnant with multiple fibroids? So if the fibroids are outside the womb, I've seen some, I've done a surgery for a woman that was pregnant and had 40 weeks out of a fibroid. Mm. It was a risky fight, it was a risky surgery. It's not, it's not normal stuff. Because but I'm not a normal doctor. You know, so <laughs> I, I, just, I it, totally it's, agree, it's you are totally. So if, yeah. if it is outside the womb, so the, this is the womb, and you have, okay. you have a big chunk outside, outside the womb, of it, you can the child get, can still yes, grow. Can stay there. And there is no but, risk but that. Most times, they must be on bed rest from about from, from like eight weeks to when they deliver. So imagine you're on bed for almost nine months because any activity on the womb that size of the fiber is just just like a coconut a coconut or a big coconut fighting a small granite you know and the granite is trying to fight to, the, fight, to, to fight the coconut up you know so it has to be relaxed and fight small and fight small and f until it grows and becomes the size of the fibroid and now outgrows the fibroid Perfect. so to say yes. i know i have read cases like that where a child and fibroid are actually competing for yes, for survival yes, yes. and um, at some point the fibroid has to just give way for the child That's so it. another question that i have here is um 
can you eat eggs if you have fibroid eggs yeah if i don't I, know if I eat anything. <laughs> another one if here is anything. what are the foods to specifically avoid nigeria we have um like we we, we have our foods are mostly people, carbohydrate people, people say a lot of stuff about food no I, I don't think there's any just know that anything that makes you add weight is it's personal okay don't take things that will make you add a lot of weight so you don't you don't increase your fat level when the fat level is increased you can have issues with fiber that's that's the case so you can eat anything but not know yourself don't eat late don't eat too too money too, too heavy so don't add weight that's all you, that's all you need to know before i let you go doctor i want to ask you something that has to do with the free um gift that you are giving to 20 women through the bof foundation wow. what i want to find out is this what are the core interest areas you are looking at for this surgery are you looking what kind of cases of fiber are you looking so, at so we're doing, we're doing just first first surgery cases okay because that's easier to really do you know and I've had over, over like 150 people already asking for the for surgery. For the surgery. You know, which, which, which already ended the um, day before yesterday, on 20th today. Okay. You know, but you know, we're still open to because um, if you see people's, if we see what people are going through, Claire, you're going to cry a lot, you know. Somebody called me today, uh, and very young, pretty lady, and she lost her job because people were calling her that she was pregnant. They're calling her that, and, she, and she, she's always off, off and off work. Whenever she's menstruating, so imagine you're, you're working for 30 days in in, mm. in, in, in the office. we are only there for 10 days, 10 days because you bleed 20 days stretch. You know your your your, your boss will not be happy with you. So those words, those kind of stuff, touch me a lot. You know, just want to just make her feel better, feel good, and and the service team needs to needs to improve. So that's what we're doing. We're just helping 20 women, thank you. you know, but thank obviously you. Thank you. we will be oversubscribed. So we need to just do more. I definitely people. know that you'll be oversubscribed because I know um, how far you choose to help the most vulnerable people. Okay. So I want to ask you one final question before I let you go, doctor. Um, what, what, how can people support BOF Foundation at this time? Oh, if you want to support, I'm really happy. Support, you can, <laughs> you can, you can, you can, you can send us a WhatsApp, um, um, 008 492 um, or send us an email at benjaminologyup2fdn at gmail.com or go to our website www.bof.org.ng and just support, make a donation. Let's help more women. Let's make them happy. Let's change our world. Let's change the narrative. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you so much, Doctor. It's such a pleasure to have you here and hopefully we'll bring you back some other time. I'm always ready. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. God and God bless you for the kindness of um, generosity of your heart. So my dear Nigerian, my dear Nigerian women, um, as you know, time flies by, but I want to leave you with this very important message. Life is happening now. Irrespective of the challenges you have as a woman, irrespective of the shortcomings that you have or the infirmities that you have, I need you to believe that you'll be fine. But one of the key things you need to remember is to live. Live your life in a manner that is purposeful. Mm -hmm. Find purpose in your pain. Find passion so that at the end of the day your life will be beautiful and meaningful. And with or without a child, if you are one of the people looking for children, remember the beautiful Ibido Igudalo. She lived a life of purpose despite the pain in her heart. And today we celebrate her from the magnanimity of her heart. I am dedicating this show to her because she's a woman that I truly admire. Mm -hmm. And she's a woman that has fought deeply for a lot of women looking for children. And five is an important part of our lives and we must deal with it we must talk about it and we must find ways to support women to become better and loving mothers so um on behalf of the world child show i would like to say a big thank you for being a part of this show i know we have not done enough justice today so i will find the time to bring doctor back again so we can look at some of the extenuating um, issues around fibroid and then if you have any questions please send them to our email um i want to call on our beautiful beautiful friends Please support the work that we do at the World Child Show. As you know, our goal is to support women, support children and their well-being. We are hoping that when you are impacted by something this meaningful, you'll be willing to give more to ensure that our message continues to reach the most vulnerable, vulnerable people. So on Instagram, we are, we are um, the World Child Show. Please follow us on Instagram. And then you can also reach us on 080-8330-5051. From myself and my dear friend Kemak, have a lovely day ahead. Bye.